Psalm 131, if you want to scroll back there on your smartphone or if you're using the chair Bibles uh, underneath or if you brought your copy, we're going we're gonna to look into this song of ascents. Over um, spring break, Donna, my wife, and I were up in Alaska doing uh, some ministry. Uh, somebody had to do it. It was awesome. Uh, and one of the days we uh, snuck off from Anchorage and went down uh, the Turnagain Road and went to Mount Elieska. And there's a tram there that goes up 3,900 feet to a restaurant where you can uh, watch the skiers go by. And so we spent an afternoon just having a great time. Somebody asked, well, did you go skiing? I said, well, I do not wish to break my leg. Uh, you know, and so it was great. And as I was preparing for this talk, I, I thought, wow, people sang this as they were going up to Jerusalem. Jericho, 700 feet below sea level. Jerusalem, 1,300 feet above sea level. You got to walk up to Jerusalem from almost every direction. So as they're going up to worship the Lord, they're singing, getting ready, long before they reach their destination. And I'd invite you to join me as we look at this psalm a little bit more. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. My apologies to the Christian ministry people that have probably heard these jokes three times already. Courtesy laughter is always appropriate. But for the rest of you that may not have heard, did you know that I wrote a book on humility? True. It's humility and how I attained it. My second book was The Three Most Humble People in the World and How I Led the Other Two to Christ. Actually, I really do have a great talk on humility, but I'm kind of waiting for a bigger crowd to give it. <laughs> My heart is not proud. I can't always say that. In fact, I wish I could say that more. But when you say it to other people, they might be faked out, they might believe it, but when you say it to the Lord, he kind of knows your heart. My heart is not proud, so let's start with the heart. Jeremiah 17 tells us the heart can lie to you. It can lie to me. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? So my heart can lie to me. Okay, it's been a while since uh, I've been in the dating circuit other than to my wife. We try to have a date every week. But, you know, your heart can lie to you. And when your heart's lying to you, it's easy to lie to you, other people. So David starts out, my heart is not proud, knowing that his heart can lie to him. And his son Solomon said a proverb in Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23, it says this, Watch over your heart with all diligence, because out of it are the issues of life. Jesus built on that and said, you know, whatever your heart is full of, your mouth and life will express. Because in Jesus' day, religion and belief was external. If you did the right things, come to chapel, you know, spiritual giants, chapel dodgers, spiritual giants, chapel dodgers. This external thing can fake others out, and sometimes we can even lie to ourselves. So we got to watch over our heart because the heart can lie to us. It needs to be guarded and Jesus said, what your heart is full of will be expressed in your behavior, in your 
speech in what you look for, which is what the second line says, my eyes are not haughty. Turn to somebody and give them your best impression of haughty eyes. Some of you are saying, what, what's the difference there? But anyway, okay. <laughs> you see, I have found in my life that what my heart desires, my eyes will find. What my heart desires, my eyes will find. For, for a good number of years when I taught in Omaha, I went to the, um, uh, on 5.30 on Friday mornings, whew, there's no intelligent life form available at that time, but I was in a Bible study and on Creighton University campus, the athletic director was a really good Christian and he hosted our Bible study and uh, there was one of the guys in that group and he was a junior high wrestling coach. And he gave an illustration that's just helped me. He says, uh, one of the things I try to tell my wrestlers that when they're in a tough spot and, and the other person almost has them pinned, he would yell from the sidelines, look away, look away, because if you look into it, you're pinned. But if you look away, it often will slip off. My heart is not proud. It can lie to me. I need to guard it, and I need to know what it's full of because my eyes are going to look for that. And you know what? Sometimes you just need to look away. I don't, I don't know what the Holy Spirit would speak to you about in that, but you know, there's a lot of things that you can look at that fill your heart with the wrong kind of stuff. He, he goes on. He says, I, I don't, I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful to, for me. I think what David is trying to communicate is, I'm not trying to replace God in my heart. Do you know, do you know people that basically my heart would love to replace God. And either in ignorance or arrogance, I look for it. I don't say that gladly. It's shameful. But I think I have friends that could join me in saying, oh, Lord, prone to wander Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Prone to wander. You know, I, I, I tease sometimes, you know, that I, I, I checked to see if there was a vacancy in the Trinity, and I, didn't, and I found out there was not a vacancy in the Trinity, so I did not apply. You probably shouldn't either. My heart's not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But, wow, here it turns. I have calmed and quieted myself. <laughs> People, I have found that it is way too hard to be quiet in my soul in a crowded, noisy room all the time. Calming your soul. Now, friends, when I look at you and your schedule, uh, I thank God for your energy because your schedule makes me tired. And I go, whew, wow, you know, if that's all gold, silver, and precious stones, that's going to be a pile of uh, reward. Uh, if it's wood, hay, and stubble, that's going to be a big bonfire. But you're doing a lot. 
and I am too. And, and sometimes I need to hmm, quiet my soul. Now, people, what do we usually boast about? What is our heart full of? Well, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, he, he talks about three things that we fill our heart with, and then one that we should. So three plus one. I think that still adds up to four. But anyway, three things. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom. Did I mention that I'm a professor? It is easy for me to fill my heart with, I know a lot of stuff. I like Lola May, the teaching professor at the, of years ago. She said, uh, when teaching, know your stuff. Know whom you're stuffing and stuff them elegantly. It's kind of a life quote for me. So I can find that my heart is full of boasting about wisdom and not understand a biblical mindset is, hey, you brainiacs, compare your knowledge to God and you're going to feel like a mental midget. You're going to feel like, oh, I shouldn't really boast of my knowledge, my place. I am, uh, you know, uh, a doctor. What's that PhD mean? Just pile the higher and deeper of stuff. Let not a wise man boast of his wisdom. Let not a strong man boast of his strength. You know, uh, a lot of sports, you know, you know, you know, you know, a third grader, a third grader kicks the goal and comes over to his opponent and goes, and I go, what is that about? Who taught that third grader to act like that? We did. And they have a natural propensity to that. Let not a wise man boast of their wisdom, brainiacs. Let not a strong man or woman boast of their strength, the jocks and jockettes. Let not a rich man boast of their riches, the wealthy, the comparative, climbing, successful class. So what should you boast about? What should you fill your heart? Now, frankly, friends, I'm paid to have knowledge. I'm hoping that I have the fear of the Lord so it becomes wisdom. I enjoy strength. Being able to sing a song of ascents while you climb up a hill is a good goal for my exercise level. And frankly, I like money. Uh, one of the students and I, Lucas and I, were talking about, you know, the Starbucks card that he has. I fully affirm his addiction. <laughs> I, I tell Donna, coffee drinking is my only addiction. Well, maybe lying too, but anyway. What are you filling your heart with? What am I filling my heart with? Oh, Jeremiah continues, but let him who boasts, it's okay to boast, but boast about this, that you know and understand me, that I am the Lord whose loving kind, and you go, whoa. So you and I should boast about knowing the Lord. And you know what? A quieted soul knows more about the Lord than a clamored soul. A crowded, cluttered heart and life often leaks the knowledge of God and there's not a fear of Jesus. So the psalmist continues, like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child, I am content. Now, you know, 
it's kind of an earthy illustration, isn't it? So, you know, so rather than embarrass myself by giving an illustration that I've observed and, you know, it's kind of hard to talk about, I went back to C.H. Spurgeon, the great preacher. He says this, the Easterns put off the time of weaning far later than we do. And we may conclude that the process grows none the easier by being postponed. So you got a four, five-year-old, six-year-old kid just being weaned from its mother. He continues, Time brings alleviations to this boy. But not only alleviations, losses or focus, but the ending of a conflict. For my observation, an unweaned child, when they're laying in their mother's bosom, they're not there for anything other than, I want. And mom is what's going to give what I want to me. Get the picture of God? that David's trying to get us to see. One of my friends, way, way back when he just had become a Christian, he, he was praying. He says, oh God, so many times I come to you with a mouthful of give me and a handful of grab. And I, and I think that's what David's saying here. Spurgeon continues, he is no longer angry with his mother, this weaned boy, but buries his head into that very bosom after which he had pined so grievously. He is weaned on his mother rather than from her. When we quiet our soul, it's not so that we would be separated from the provision of God, it's that we would lean in. I want to lean in to the Lord. I don't want to be separated from, I need Jesus. You do too. I don't want to be weaned away from him. I want to be able to be quiet and lean in. Now, how do you do that? A couple, couple ideas, practical. You know, the old idea of a quiet time is a good anchor. And don't just do the five minutes, you know, nod to God and then I'm gone. Try to have an extended, quiet heen of soul. Spend some time reading the Word. Spend some time talking about what you read about. Quiet your soul and get your soul over-focused on the Lord. That's the first thing. Second thing, go to sleep with a focus in your heart upon Jesus. Because what you go to sleep thinking about is usually what you think about all night. Third, seek to see the Holy Spirit often during the day. So, one, quiet time. Two, go to bed thinking on Jesus. Three, Look for the Holy Spirit's work. Do God sightings and say, I see Jesus. There he is in the face of my friend. Wow, I didn't see that coming. No, that's a God sighting. We were meant to live the life of Christ. And that's what I want my heart to be full of. And so the final exhortation is, Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forever. You see, we often talk about knowing Jesus as, yeah, 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 pie in the sky, by and by. For now, too. So, here we go. Not a proud heart. Not in haughty eyes. Not in self-praise. Not in a grasping hand. No. Knowing God. No. Trusting God. Yes. Whatever God wants for me. That equals hope. Yes, let's live that out. So here we go. Where are you today? How's your heart? Need a little heart maintenance? I do. Heart maintenance happens often through prayer. But some of you need to 
connect to the Lord and you need to have your heart changed. You need a transplant. You can't just put in a pacemaker. You need a transplant. You need to believe in Jesus as your Savior. Can I say that directly to you? Oh, dear friend, don't study at Trinity and not know the Lord. Don't learn all about him and not believe him for what he's done and what he can do in your life. Believe in Jesus for your salvation. And if you haven't done that and you've been being nudged forward toward that, don't leave this chapel. Come down, meet somebody down front, and let's get that anchored in. You need a life in Christ. I do too. Secondly, wean yourself off of thinking of God as your provision only. He does provide. But wean yourself to lean in to God as a child that just loves to be with their parents. And then third, Israel, hope in God. Do it with other people that are going the same way. That's where we gather. I need other people that are going to nudge me toward God. Because I get enough from my own soul and from others that nudge me away from God. So, here we go. If you're here and you need more hope, and who doesn't? First, are you a believer in Jesus for your salvation? Second, have you leaned into Jesus not to get more stuff, but just to know him more? Take that journey and then do it with other people. So, hey, if you need to do business with God, some of us are going to be down front. We'll, we'd be happy to pray with you. You don't have to. You can pray with friends. You can pray by yourself. But sometimes you need a little help from other people to make sure that your journey is hot. Let's pray. Lord, as uh, we think about coming to you, it's like heaping up our heart and making it an altar so that you can see the sacrifice of love and gratitude for the love and life that you've given us. So, Lord, we do that right now. Uh, in the songs that we sing, in the, in the thoughts that we think, in the life that we live, and certainly in the way that we relate to each other. Because we want to go hard after like a weaned child, we're going to lean in. We're going to know how to manage the heart that you've given us so that it's not proud and haughty, but it's pure and blameless and the source of life. Thank you in Jesus' name.